today on SAU News. The first ever spring 423 night is coming up. Will TikTok officially be banned? These stories and more coming up. SAU News starts now. Welcome back to SAU News. I'm Naomi Linder. I'm Alexis Dewey. And I'm Matthew Taylor. Our weekly newscast is brought to you by SJC Productions in the School of Journalism and Communication. This weekend will be the first ever Spring 423 Night Market with lots of exciting new changes to the highly anticipated event. The Student Association sponsored Night Market is being held for the second time this year. Until now, it has been a once-a-year occurrence, but with increased student demand and a raising number of student vendors, as they decided to host another market this spring. Changes include a new layout of booths pre-organized by category, food, art, and clothes. In an effort to enhance the quality of the booths, vendors also had to go through an application process and be approved by essay, where in the past, any student could reserve a spot. Vendors also had the option to receive free food containers or paper bags from essay upon request. Perhaps one of the most exciting new introductions are Bear Bucks, after Southern's newly officialized mascot. The $5 equivalent coupon will be given to students to spend at any booth, and at the end of the night, vendors can turn in their Bear Bucks for cash. Attendees can look forward to more than just shopping and live music in this time around. There will be also a mechanical bull and fun zone to explore. What's your guys' favorite part about 4239? I think I'm the most excited this year for the mechanical bull. Oh yeah, for What's sure. It's the fun zone. I guess we'll find out when we all go there. Yeah. After 25 years at Southern Adventist University, Robert Binge, Dean of the School of Health and Kinesiology, is retiring this May. Professor Binge has had a passion and love for sports since an early age, which fed his long career as a physical education teacher at Seventh-day Adventist schools. During his time at Southern, he has helped with expanding the community pool, has taught a variety of physical educational classes, and made significant changes that helped improve our intramurals program today. According to Binge, God has blessed him, his family, and his career. His advice to students is to get focused and get the task done. His position as dean will be succeeded by Professor Judy Sloan. Continuing a five-year streak, the number of students participating in intramural sports broke another record this year. The most popular sport this year was volleyball. With just over 700 students among 96 teams, this surpasses the previous record set in 2020 of 518 participants. Director of intramurals Troy Walker said that participation keeps rising, with the freshman class having the highest number of players. Additionally, more women are playing in intramural sports than in previous years. Walker said that intramurals are a great way for students to get out of their rooms and take a break from studying. So what about you guys? What are your favorite intramurals? My favorite is definitely softball. I think that softball and volleyball are both really fun, mm -hmm. and I did them in high school, but I really just support, now that I'm in college, from the sidelines. <laughs> if you enjoy TikTok, enjoy it while you can. Some elected officials want to ban the popular app in the United States. I did some further research into this controversial topic. Perhaps you haven't heard it yet, but you may not be able to sit down and de-stress on TikTok much longer if politicians in Washington get their way. TikTok, the application which took the world by storm in 2020, has been facing heavy backlash as some U.S. government officials are proposing to ban the app in America. Officials fear that the Chinese government may be stealing private data from Americans using TikTok. The global workforce that include In March, CEO of TikTok Sho Chu testified before Congress and pleaded his case. He said the app had never given any private information from U.S. users to a foreign government, and he promised that all data collected by TikTok would remain safely in America. Wait. TikTok dances like these may be losing their platform soon, but is that such a bad thing? Let's see what people have to say. Yeah, I feel like I get why people would want it to go away and think it's a threat, but I don't know, I'm honestly going to really miss it if it does. So, uh, two years ago I used to post a lot and I had 200,000 followers on the app, but I've stopped posting since because of how much time it consumed. 
Uh, so do I think it'd be good if it got banned? Yeah, overall it probably would, but would I miss it a lot if it did? Yeah, absolutely. Decisions are up in the air, but once we hear more, you'll hear more. For SAU News, I'm Naomi Linder. According to Local 3 News, the Tennessee Governor Bill Lee actually signed a House bill last week that bans TikTok from public college campuses' Wi-Fi. However, this hasn't stopped students from turning to a different network source on their devices, where they continue to use the app. This bill has affected students' app usage on campuses such as University of Tennessee, Chattanooga. I haven't really seen this effect on our campus mm -mm. yet. Yeah, not yet. But we'll see. I guess we'll see how it goes in the future, huh? Guess we'll find out. According to an article published in a Southern Accent, there have been about seven car-related thefts reported on Southern's campus since August. SAU News reporter Lauren Arant talks about how to stay safe from theft on campus. If you were a car thief, Southern's parking lots is where the money is. With a recent spike in break-ins, we asked the question, what is campus safety doing about it and how can we keep our cars safe? Well. First and foremost, we wanted to alert the students and let them know it was going on um, because the ultimate way to stop this from happening is actually not have anything in your vehicle. Keep your doors locked. You really want to keep stuff out of your car that's valuable. Multiple car burglaries have been going on here at Southern's campus. So what are you doing to make sure your car stays safe? Make sure to remove phones, key fobs, wallets, and purses, as well as any other valuable items that might attract attention. Sean Haas says that campus safety has increased the nightly patrols percentages and are working with the College Dale Police Department to increase safety. There's a third option that we've been working on for maybe about six months is uh, increasing some cameras on the peripheral areas where there's not as much um, coverage. Genesis Ventura says she hasn't been a victim of the burglaries, but after hearing campus reports, she took action. Um, I remember when articles came out like, oh, there was things stolen, even my friend got something stolen from our car, and I used to like leave my car open, but until that, I was like, okay, I'm going to lock my car. This has been Lauren Arant with SAU News. The last reported car theft on campus safety's crime log was February 10th of this year. While we do most of our own reporting through SAU News, a lot of our information comes from the hard work and stories from those at the Southern Accent. And this Humans of Southern special from the SJC's digital storytelling class, we get a glimpse into one of the minds behind our school's paper. My name is Amanda Blake. I'm a junior journalism major at Southern Adventist University. Freshman year, I started as a reporter for The Accent, and I had no idea I would continue with it. I did it to just sort of throw myself in the deep end, start participating in stuff. Even back then, I remember the editors, Paula and Christina, were like texting me and they said, you're just so reliable, um, you caught on to AP style very quickly, we really think you should you know, keep sort of moving up the ladder. Right now I am managing editor of The Accent and I started that last semester. A lot of what I do, I write a lot of articles. I edit the, the entire newspaper every weekend and then on Monday nights of course we go in and we edit the newspaper with you know we get our pens out and um, go through the whole thing getting it ready for print so I do a lot of that but I also pursue stories I you know kind of try to keep relationships with the um, newsmakers across campus just trying to find out what's going on I pitch I story ideas to people and just overall just kind of checking up with all of the editors and all of the reporters when they need extra help. Hey, you know, if somebody's not available for an interview and that's the only time their source is, maybe I'll come in and help interview them or just kind of random things, which I enjoy. I, I enjoy kind of helping everybody out so I can get a little taste of each part of the job. It's a lot of fun. I'll be texting you. Um, I'll work on the mascot thing. Okay. But seeing the impact that certain stories can have can just you know it can really shock you and just seeing comments on social media it's interesting in it it honestly it kind of invigorates me a little bit to start conversations but sometimes it just it just seems to cause a lot of unnecessary anger it's crazy to me sometimes I forget that people really do read the accent and they read the bylines they like see my name and they associate me with these stories and people like could be inspired by that I'm like whoa that makes me feel really good I appreciate that you guys I'm proud of the journey that I've had, and it's not just been me, it's been everybody I've worked with, all of the editors, Alana, Megan, Paula, um, a lot of my coworkers, Professor Johnson, all of the professors. It's, it's been a process, and I'm really 
grateful. Here I am, and I have no plans of going to any other major. I love what I'm doing. Amanda will be the Southern Accent's Editor-in-Chief next school year. We want to recognize and thank the Southern Accent for all of the work they do to keep our student body informed and up to date. SAU News is a student-run production here in Southern's School of Journalism and Communication. I'm Alexis Dewey. I'm Matthew Taylor. And I'm Naomi Linder. Even though this is our last newscast of the school year, catch us one last time as your host for this year's Strawberry Fest on April 30th. Thank you so much for watching. See you next year.